11th edition of the Seeds of Gold Farm Clinic took place at Makeri University Research Institute in Kabanyoro. The training was specifically looking at enterprises like urban farming, banana farming, aquaculture, goat rearing, among others. Today, we look at some of the critical ventures that were tackled in this edition. Coming up on Seeds of Gold. Each animal will learn where it stays and it will stay in that pen for the rest of its life. Anyone who comes in that pen that does not belong there, they didn't grow up together. They will bat you until they either can kill it or you take it out. The god wearing enterprise in Uganda has traditional roots. It was done as a peasant man's work that has since diversified into commercial animal husbandry. Sadat Walusimbi from Mual Kabanyoro, a facilitator at the farm clinic for the central region, teaches on what it takes to start up and maintain a desirable commercial goat farm. First to consider is the proper housing structures and shelter. Normally when you're dealing with small spaces and yet you want to make sure someone was asking about separation of the goats, so if you have a small space and you have to give special attention to some goats, that's why we make these divisions. And actually when we're going to talk about housing, the way this housing is, it is something that can become one single pen. I don't know if you've realized that. One single pen or very many pens. So we can change any time. I can come tomorrow and say divide this one into two. So when we're doing structures, you have to be mindful that for management purposes, there are going to be changes and you should allow that in your structure to be able to be flexible or versatile. You can use it for many different things. It was a question, how high should the platform be? Technically, it should be one meter to 1.5. The reason, we want you to be able to clean I don't know who looked under those houses. You should be able to get down and scoop all the manure and put it aside. Look at the animals. Look at the structure where the animals are residing. Look at the features of the animals. If you can see any differences between the animals, note them. Because I expect you to ask me why this one looks like this and doesn't look like the other. Each animal will learn where it stays and it will stay in that pen for the rest of its life. Anyone who comes in that pen that does not belong there, they didn't grow up together. They will bat you until they either can kill it or you take it out. We separate them according to age and size. So they know their houses. So, so we tend to group those of the same age, we group, group them together and also make them stay together. Knowing and choosing the correct breed of goats to rear for either meat or milk is a key factor in this enterprise. About 95% of goats in Uganda are indigenous breeds while just 5% are crossbreeds or pure exotic goats and these include the savannah, togenberg and boar. These were imported to improve meat and milk production from crossbreed offsprings. From the management system, we touched about the breeds. I think we have a better understanding. We have three mainly. For economic reasons, we have the meat goats, we have three breeds that are on the market, that are exotic. We're going to divide them into two. You'll find boar. It's a good animal. It grows very fast in its purest form, if it's 100%. The people who bred it expect to have at least actually that animal can be up to 30 kilograms in four months. So you have the boar, good meat breed, grows very fast and of course the crosses also are going to grow faster. Any local breed that we're going to talk about that is crossed with this animal, the progeny grows faster than the, 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 the mother, assuming this, the father is going to be a boar. The progeny is going to grow faster than the mother. In all cases, whether you have the smallest African or Movende or what people call Karamoja, Sebei, the biggest one of the local ones that we have is the Movende. And that's what people who are going into business would prefer. If you're going business and you're going local, you'll have, you'll have to have the Movende, even for crossing purposes. 
Because the Mbende will achieve almost between 35, sometimes some of them go to 40 kilograms. In you're, you're talking about the earliest studies were, were saying they could be between 30 to 35, but at 18 months. But don't be surprised. That is under good nutrition. If yours doesn't get there, <laughs> it has the genetic potential to get there, but the feeding and management will not get you there. So if you look at this one, what do you think it is? It's a cross. Okay? It's moving the goat. That's the answer I was looking for. Which is wrong. Yes. This, that's the reason I brought it. And it goes back to color. People, in, because we do not have breeds that are very specific in Uganda, even for Movende, because when we talk about Movende, that name relates to, there are a few parameters that we understand about its characteristics. But the typical characteristic, someone will say it is black. It is always black and it has no spots of white or any color. Hmm? And? And, and the, 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 if you look at the surface, it's shiny, it's not like the other one. It reflects light. And of course, for Movende, it used to be, that was a selling point, because that hide is, was more expensive. I don't know the rates now, but they were looking for that. Now, that animal, those who said it's a cross, it's a cross. And how do you tell? Oh, it says the kid. The, it, 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 it is the ears that sell it out. The color, it can belong to Moven. But the other characteristics tell you it is not. And the most reporting characteristic is it's the ears. Because it is borrowing, it's, the ears are going to that one. They have not yet reached that far, but you can see. Now, contrast that with the other one. Sam, can you make that one stand up? The black one. So, when you see these other Chigezi, Sebei, I, I cannot tell you actually whether they are very different from these, but of those, even those, the largest is going to be moving. But for business purposes, I, again, I would say if Movendi, if we try to characterize what it is, that is the animal that you need for business purposes. The other ones you can eat as you want, but for business purposes, looking at growth rates, which we want for meat goats, that is the breed in terms of the locals. Exotics, we said we have boa. You will find on the market, people have savannah. There are very many YouTube videos that you'll see, which is purely white. But again, you'll see it because it's being developed by the same, almost the same people, but it's just the same country. And the ears will also be droopy but it's characteristically white. Now, in terms of growth rates, how that is different from boa, uh, boa may have an edge. The other one, the savannah, people say those, we haven't done studies and I've not seen any studies, but they'll tell you that it's more, it's, they use the word hardy, which is for either I don't know, but because it does hardy compared to what? Is it internal worms, is it diseases? But they say it does better. And sometimes people say that the boa has, a, a, if you buy a boa and it's, you want to start with 100% and it's male, they talk about libido. I don't know if you've heard that. And the first questions came out in 2000, and about, two, about 2000, 2002, when they brought in a bigger batch. And it was all over in the papers that these animals are not performing. But one of the first studies I did in 2005 was to figure out why. And what we figured out was that actually these animals were not, were not feeding enough. Which makes sense. If you want him to perform, you have to feed him. So we had to give them about a, a half a kilogram a day of maize bran mixed with cotton seed cake. In addition to what they were. So they would come back in the evening, you bring your concentrate, Maize bran plus cotton seed cake mixed and also allowed to have a mineral block. And by the end of four weeks, these animals were performing as good as the Movendi in terms of libido. So goats don't eat like 
other animals, especially cows or sheep. They are very selective. They look out for the best and they do not want to eat at that level of the ground. The goats wants to eat at its head. You release them here, they will not even stop unless you force them to be here. If you release them now, you're going to find them close to the road. But there's, you see there is grass everywhere. But if you release sheep or a cow, ah, it will start. Carpet. But goats don't do that. They look for shoots, very nutritive, they are very picky. And it will start from the end and then come back. So you choose faster growth, when you go to the pure, which is the fastest, or resistance, or you want to be in the middle. And then when we talk about the middle, there are also some variations in the middle there. Eh? At what, how much blood of exotics do you want to have? But whichever extreme you go, you have problems. When you move up to exotics, you'll tell me when it comes to management, you may not be able to manage those animals with just normal, you know, put the goat there, let it eat, and it won't work. If you want something that is, may you don't want to spend a lot of money in terms of diseases, then you go to one which is well adapted. But I think it is prudent for you to be somewhere in the middle or close to the middle. important for a farmer to use identification tags on the animals. This is a form of keeping records and proper management. This will help you track them according to ages, race, sex and other groupings as you may desire. We have different colors of tags and there are different types of tags but they all serve the same purpose and I brought uh, three examples here that we use for goats. You'll see some of these on the market. They look like the, for the cows, but they are smaller. You'll see these. And these look about the same, but they have some small differences. In terms of, uh, I think this one is more flexible. This one is just more rigid. Now, you also see the different colors. The reason why we use different colors, it should be used purposefully. You can, you can do it when you have no intention because those are the tags that you have. But the purpose of having different colors and why they sell different colors, you can decide that the kids that are being born this year, they're going to have red. Or all the mothers have red. All the kids have blue. All the others, whatever group you want, depending on, on the segregation that you're making, you as a farmer, in terms of your management, this allows you to differentiate one group from the other group, while the individual differentiates one animal from the other in terms of the number. But the colors, it is groups. Now, you see different shapes. This is, it's about economics, but also it has an implication on function. These are the cheapest. This is 1,500, but I'll show you what happens. You can easily tear it and the goats actually you'll see some of them have already torn this part off. This doesn't come out, the pin, because that's, you put that in with the applicator. But this part here, this is what you'll get for 1,500. If you have more money, then this is going to cost you 3,000 to 3,500. People want to buy goats of, one, uh, of uh, 150, right? That seems to be some consensus somewhere. I don't know who brought it, that goats are 150. Mm -hmm. No, I don't. Because this tag only is 3,500. So you cannot get a goat that is going to be over 150. 
if a single tag costs 3,000. This is about the same, but they are different companies. Goats are ruminants and as such, they feed majorly on grasses. For supplement, they need an appropriate ratio of proteins, legumes, and not forgetting water. This combination of feeds will help the farmer achieve the best quality of meat from any kind of breed. That is what you see right there. That is Lucina. If I put these in there, you'll see what those animals can do to this, except for this. This one here, the protein content is good. They don't like it. And sometimes we've done studies where you, 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 you harvest the leaves and wilt them. Some, then you dry them and then you make them into a powder. And then you can put them in your maize brand as a protein, uh, uh, supplement, as a protein supplement. This, you can bring as much as you want and they'll eat it all. So establish this for protein, glycidia, this is Caliandra, Lucina is that one. Normally the difference here, this one normally it gives you the, the red flowers, I wish I got, got one with the flower, You'll see, you see the red flowers. And most farmers have been advised to put them in their gardens, just because they fix nitrogen. But at the same time, they have good nutrients for. So. Sometimes you may have this kind of grass, which might be actually worse, but if the animals have nothing to do, they will eat it. Sometimes if you're going to establish, this is Bracaria. Bra, B-R-A-C-H-A-R-I-A. -A -A. They can eat this, but it's not their favorite because it's always low but for, for grasses it has a little better nutritional component people have tried and for those who are in semi-intensive they have tried to especially people who do zero grazing they encourage you to have elephant grass goats eat elephant grass there's no problem with it you can chop it you can give it all they will eat it now, the, what I want to say is that there is this thing here. What does it look like? But it's not sugarcane. It's newer uh, on the Ugandan market compared to these other uh, different types of... Now, this is called sugar nappy. Mm. <laughs> eh? You can get it here at Kavanyu. All Whatever I'm mentioning, you can actually request and you'll get. The reason why people are moving to this is the amount of herbage that you can get. You look at this and how much this can generate. So most people are going to for the biomass, that this gives more biomass compared to, to this. I think it's still understood what the challenges could be, termites and what, but in terms of regrowth and herbage, it will give you enough. So with these grasses, and already what you have, these animals can be kept well. Now, this is not enough. I talked about supplementing the animals. So this would get you about uh, between 25, 28% protein content. Now, you give this protein, because we're talking about ruminants, we want to feed the bacteria that is in the rumen. The animal gets very little from the food that you give it. The animal feeds on the bacteria, so you feed the bacteria first that is in the rumen, and they need protein and nitrogen to be able to do that. And that's how now the animal is going to benefit. Now, the other grass that is on the market is this one. Rhodes. A-R-H-O R H O D E S, and they use another common name, um, some, uh, some common, some people use another name for it. They use Chloris Guyana, which is more of an English. Chloris, so if you find Chloris on the market, 
you will find these seeds. It's a grass, but its protein content is also good. To recap the much information at this edition of the Seeds of Gold Farm Clinic provided much needed information for farmers who want to venture into gold rearing. These are some of the key points to be considered. There are a number of breeds to choose from. Color does not define a gold breed. Local breeds are more disease resistant. Exotic breeds have a higher growth rate. Cross breeds should be between 50 to 75 percent genetic ratio. Goats need proteins and legends to supplement their feeds. Proper feeding for goats boosts their fertility. The F1 is the first generation from the crossbreed. There is always so much to learn at the Seeds of Gold Farm Clinic. This initiative by the Monitor Seeds of Gold magazine, together with the NTV Seeds of Gold program, was created to equip farmers with the knowledge they need to go into commercial farming of different agricultural enterprises, basing on the information acquired from skilled personnel. Sara Naulewalakira is the marketing manager at Nation Media Group and now explains how you too can be part of the next Nation Media Farm Clinic. Uh, we are here for the 11th Seeds of Gold Farm Clinic, which is an exciting experience for us because we've walked a journey where we used to do farm clinics every, you know, once a year, and we've evolved to five farm clinics a year. These farm clinics are brought to you by the Seeds of Gold magazine. The Seeds of Gold magazine is a two-font magazine which is in the Daily Monitor every Saturday, but there's also a show, a Seeds of Gold show on NTV on Saturday at 7.30 p.m., we believe that agriculture being the backbone uh, in Uganda, people should evolve from growing crops and rearing animals for their feeding and their neighborhoods, but also evolve into agribusiness and be able to make money. So that's what births the farm clinic. So we are here for the 11th edition, and we believe that this gives an opportunity for both small-scale farmers and large-scale farmers to get into agribusiness and make more money from agriculture. The other thing is that we are excited that even when we are done with Central, we shall be going to the northern region, which will be in Lira in October, and also go to the east in Serere at the end of the year to try as much as possible to partner with um, experts in the fields of agriculture to make sure that we contribute to the betterness and wallets of Ugandans in this country. For our next edition of Seeds of Gold Farm Clinic this October, we shall be in the northern part of the country. Come and don't miss out on the free information that could transform your farm into gold.